hey guys welcome back to my channel i am miss tyson and this is the industry standard talk lounge tis um thank you for tuning in today um i would like to talk today about a topic that has been widely covered um in the media and highly talked about um but i don't think that i've come to you guys to really you know express how i feel about it and um you know just kind of coffee talk about it a little bit but before we get into the topic that um that has sparked this video um, I want to tell you guys a quick little a, a quick little funny story. So, um, yesterday, uh, I decided to come into work into the city a little early, so I ended up taking the train um, with my daughter, who's in high school, and um, my husband. Which you know, me and my husband, we kind of work um, like three blocks away from one another and my daughter kind of you know keeps going a little bit further so we, long story short we take the train you know all the way into Manhattan together so um my daughter so when me and my husband gets off the train to catch the local um I've got like some 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 tunes in you know in my ear now I don't consider myself a heavy like music person so to speak, even though, you know, I am into different genres of music. So, you know, on my playlist, you can catch, you know, rock, pop, hip hop, you know, rap, you know, um, you know, uh, 50s music, you know, Motown, um, and everything in between, right? So I have recently heard this song on the radio. It's called uh, Drip Too Hard. So, um, I'm pretty sure everybody out there have heard it or whatever the case may be. Um, you can also catch me listening to a lot of, um, gospel music as well and gospel rap. Um, but I digress. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm listening to Drip Too Hard in My Ear. It's a new song that I, that I came across that I kind of like it. Um, I like the melody. I like the lyrics, you know, it kind of you know, gets me, you know, uh, excited about all my commute to work, right? So my husband is like, are you listening to Drip Too Hard? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yo, what is up with you and this twerking ratchet music? Like, you are so not that type of person. Okay, deep down inside, I like those kind of sounds, you know, I find it to be fun music, you know, um, I can't get with it when, you know, the lyrics are like too disrespectful or too um, graphic and raunchy, but you know, when it has a catchy hook, catchy beat, you know, I start, you know, going back and forth to it. So, um, you know, I just, I just found that to be funny because he looks at me as a square for some reason. Um, I grew up in the uh, South Bronx on the West side. So I don't understand why he thinks that, you know, I'm not in tune with, you know, hip hop and rap and all that. But I just thought that that was a funny little story. Um, give you guys a little insight into uh, my mornings and my days or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm here in New York. It's kind of cold. Um, I'm not really prepared for the cold weather. Um, I don't feel like I really got, you know, to enjoy this, this summer, um, weather wise. Um, I didn't get to the beach not one time. Um, although I bought like three new bathing suits, ridiculous. Um, but let's, let's, let's get to the reason why this video is up. Let's get to the heart. Let's get to the meat. Um, sexual harassment. I'm just going to throw that word out there. Sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, rape, groping, um, uh, all of these like uh, negative, hard hitting words and phrases that um, describe a lot of what we women and some men go through um, in the workplace. 
whether your workplace be, you know, a law firm or the MTA or a photo, you know, modeling um, or whatever, right? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand now, I've been in the entertainment industry for, for a long time and um, even beyond the entertainment industry, um, I think that every single woman in her lifetime has experienced some form of sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, rape. Some people have expressed all of the, some people have experienced um, all of the above. But so it's not something that's shocking to me. It's not something that's new to me, right? Um, but I'm really excited to see that the Me Too movement has um, blown up the way that it has, that is bringing awareness to it, right? So we have, you know, in our community, you know, um, I could talk about the Harvey Weinsteins and, you know, um, the Woody Allens and, you know, um, the Kevin Spacey's and stuff like that. But I'm more interested in talking about, you know, um, my my brothers, you know, um, and that's how I'm going to, you know, reference the people that I'm about to talk about in this video, you know, as my brothers, because, um, you know, we do come from one nation, um, what, no matter how, like, uh, separated or how far down the lineage, you know, we each might come from, you know, we're, we, we all come from the same, um, the same tribe, you know, African American, black, you know, whatever you want to, you know, you refer to yourself as, um, I like to refer to myself as either or sometimes, you know, you can refer to me as African American, sometimes you could just refer to me as plain old black, um, you know, I stand by, by both terms. Um, the thing that sparked this whole thing is because, you know, right now, um, we have Dave East and Antonio Brown, um, being accused of, one is being accused of battery, you know, on a woman, which is Dave East. And then you have Antonio Brown, who's being, um, accused of sexual misconduct by more than one uh individual you know one more than one female um but it brings me back to you know jason mitchell right who um recently well not too recently but like uh back in may um was fired from a hit show the chai right for sexual misconduct now i'm trying to figure out you know, I've been speaking to a lot of different men in regards to how they feel about this. You know, some guys, you know, are like, listen, you know, I have daughters, I have sisters, you know, my mom, like, you know, what these men are doing is not right. You know, I'm not into it. You know, I feel like, you know, I stand behind women 100%. I stand behind the Me Too movement 100%. But then I have, you know, some men who feel like, you know, men can't do anything anymore. Men are under attack. Men can't say anything. Men can't do anything. Um, and I, I, you know, and they become extremely defensive at, you know, um, the, you know, uh, the Marcus Cousins and the Paul Mooney um, stories and, you know, the Nate Parker. You know, the more that we hear these people, David Blaine, Russell Simmons, Ben Verveer, you know, um, um, you know, Cuba, Cuba Gooden Jr., Travis Smiley, um, um, you know, Jamie Foxx, even, you know, Morgan Freeman, right? So, when we hear these names and we hear these stories coming out, you know, it, it, it really makes the men feel like there's an attack on men, right? But if the men feel like there's an attack on men, imagine how us females feel, okay? Since the age of about 11, I've been hit on. I've been catcalled. I've been objectified. Um, you know, simply walk into the store to get milk. 
um, you know, you'll have guys on the corner. As I mentioned a little earlier in this video, I grew up in, you know, the South Bronx on the West Side. So, you know, just coming out of my house, you know, minding my business, 11, 12 year old girl, you know, going to the store, getting milk, you know, you know, something that my mother asked me to do, you know, I'm afraid. I'm worried as I'm walking up the block. I'm dreading it because I know that there's at least three guys that are standing on the corner that are going to say something to me that is extremely offensive. They are going to do something to me that's extremely offensive. And, you know, it happened every single time, right? So, you know, being a grown woman, you know, in my age right now, um, I've become immune to it, you know, I've become numb to it. So, you know, when a guy, you know, says shorty with the fat, you know, whatever, whatever, derriere, you know, behind, you know, I've I've gotten to a point where I just ignore it, I keep walking, you know, um, but it's not fair. It's so not fair. You know, the other, you know, um, last year, you know, my daughter, you know, um, came upstairs really upset because you know she was in this she was in like a, a discount store and the guy behind the counter you know was objectifying her now you know she last year she had just turned 13 she's just growing into her body she's just growing into her looks and we have this grown man right grown man with a job okay with a job that is not thinking even not thinking about for a second about his career his livelihood his getting his coins none of that all he is thinking about is the fact that he wants this young female that has just entered the store he all sense of you know um decency all sense of um how do you say um rationale completely leaves his mental frame because he's driven, you know, by his lust to, to the point where he doesn't even care or even realize that he's making someone feel so uncomfortable and that in that moment, he's changing the course of the way that this young girl is now going to see men, right? So I'll give you guys a little a little a little story, right? Um, you know, I was working at this job. This happened maybe like three years ago, right? So I wore this like shift dress, the sheaf dress, right? If you guys don't, you know, that's watching them and I don't know what's you know, don't know what it is. It's just like a straight A line dress. Like it looks like a t shirt, but it's a dress, right? So one of my um colleagues, right? Now I was new at this particular job, so I really didn't know anyone, I, you know, whatever, whatever. He comes upstairs and he asks me, you know, um, you know, for, for, for something that was job related, right? So I said, oh, it's right here. So I kind of had to lean over my desk just a tad bit to grab, you know, what it is that he was asking me for, right? And in the instance that I went and did that, what came out of his mouth next, I, I really couldn't believe it. He was like, wow, did, the, um, did your husband let you out the house that way? And I instantly, you know, stood up and I was like, well, of course he did because he gave me the money to buy this dress. So yeah, he does know. Um, thank you for your concern, you know, and you know, he laughed and he kind of like walked away. Now, my thing is this, never in the history. Now, I am in, in, in the entertainment industry. I am a talent agent, right? And before I was a talent agent, I was a talent manager for a lot, a lot of years, right? I have worked around some really great looking men. I mean, head to toe, just all around beautiful, great looking men. Never in the history of me being in my job, in my position, have I ever looked at a man and objectified him. The thought has never even 
cross my mind to say something to another individual that's sexually offensive. Like, oh, wow, you know, those, those, the, your wife or your girlfriend let you out, outside the house with those slacks on? I mean, do you, do you see how ridiculous that sounds? I mean, and the fact that, the fact that so many men, and this is not an attack on men. This is not an attack on men because not every man is like that, right? Um, you know, I have a husband, you know, um, he's never been accused of sexually assaulting anyone. You know, I have brothers, I have cousins. They've never been accused of sexually assaulting anyone. You know, does not mean it hasn't happened, right? It just means that they have never been accused of it, right? And I've never, you know, necessarily witnessed it in my, you know, in my presence. Now, um, you know, I do have a cousin that'll, you know, uh, you know, see a woman walking down the street and be like, oh, wow, look at that rump. And I'll be like, yo, dude, like, like, why? You know what I mean? Why are you saying that? You know, um, I would check them, you know, right there in, you know, their tracks or whatever. But I want to know what is it that, that gets stirred up, you know what I mean, in a man that makes him feel like what he's about to say or what he's about to do is okay. I mean, you can comment on a lady, you can say, you know, wow, you know, you look really beautiful today. You know, Th that's okay. That's okay. You know, if you wanna say, you know, um, wow, you know, that's a lovely blouse, you know, let's keep it general. You know what I mean? Let's keep it general. Is it so hard to just keep it general? Is it really that hard? I mean, the some of the men, the celebrity men that I that I've listed, right? They've got a lot to lose. A lot to lose, right? In this instant. So and and some of them have literally lost it all. I mean, you have the Bill Cosby's and you have the um the uh, R. Kelly's, you know, um, they, they, they've they literally lost their legacy, right? Um, and I'm saying Bill Cosby because he has been convicted, right? He's been convicted in, you know, a court of law for some of the things he was accused of, right? Um, so, you know, I can speak in that, in that reference, right? So he's literally lost his legacy. Over what? Over your sexual proclivities? Over your sexual desires? Do you know how, like, ridiculous that is? Like, you are a grown individual. And you mean to tell me you can't see something that you like in another individual and not have enough restraint and enough respect and enough common decency to treat that other individual like they matter, you know? So when I hear, you know, men saying that there's an attack on men, we can't say anything, we can't do anything. No, you just can't be sexually offensive. You just can't, um, you know, involve yourself in sexual misconduct. You just can't rape. You can't, you know, um, make a woman who is simply coming to work to do her job feel disgusted. That's not what she's coming to work for. That's not what she's there for. You know what I mean? And, you know, um, when I heard the story about Jason Mitchell, I'm like, dude, you're not even a big enough star to be trying to pull this crap. Like... Like, this woman quit her job. As I said, you know, earlier, you know, I work with, you know, actors and actresses, right? You know how hard it is for them to land a series regular role on a hit show? It can literally take anywhere up to 15 years. 15 years. And this woman quit her job on a hit show where she was a series regular, quit her job because she could not stand 
coming to work and working with Jason Mitchell. He was making her feel that uncomfortable that this woman gave up her job, her dream job. I mean, let that sink in for a minute. She gave up her dream job. What she does to provide for her family, what was more than likely her passion, her dream, her desire that probably took her a long time to get there. The m amount of money she invested in headshots, you know, uh, acting classes, you know, um, not to mention her emotional and her psyche. What that took of, you know, constantly going to auditions and self-taping and, you know, being denied for the role, not booking, you know, getting that call back and still close but no cigar. Quit her job quit her dream job because a man at her job was making her feel very uncomfortable. We got to do better. You know what I mean? We have to do better. Um, I don't know where all this hypersexuality, you know, um, aggression against women, you know, um, has become so accepting you know, um, this toxic culture of, um, you know, objectifying women in ways that some men have taken it so far as to rape them and sexually assault them. Um, but we have to do better, you know, and one way that we can do better, you know, as a whole, because I also see some women that that are like, oh, whatever. He said, you know, yes, your legs look nice, big deal. What do you do? You should be happy that a guy is attracted to you or looking at you or whatever the case may be. So this is for them too. Um, how about we, you know, raise our sons in a way that they have become masters of their sexuality, masters of their you know, um, you know, um, desires and, and, and their lust, you know what I mean? Like, let's teach our sons that, you know, everything you see that you like, you can't just go and touch. Okay. Um, let's, you know, start holding each other accountable when we see these things. You know, when we see somebody that's being, you know, overtly, you know, disrespectful towards women or aggressive towards women, let's, you know, st step out and say, yo, dude, what are you doing? What are you saying? Like, that's not cool. You really think she want to, you know, walk to the store with you catcalling, harassing her, following her? Like, who wants that? Nobody wants that. Yo, yo dude, chill out. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let, let's start holding each other accountable, you know, um... And to the women who have falsely accused men, shame on you. Shame on you. Because as a woman, you know what we go through on a daily basis. And, um, you know, there's no excuse for you besides being evil and vindictive to, you know, lie on a man. You know, about sexually abusing you and... Um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, yeah. So I just want to come and talk about that. I have some other things I want to talk about, um, but I'm probably gonna put like up another video or whatever. Um, you know, feel free to comment, subscribe, like, uh, reach out to me. It's T I S Talk Lounge across the board. If you want to email me, um, you can email me at T I S Talk Lounge at Gmail dot com um you know put your comments you know how you feel about it um and how you think we can move forward uh thank you for tuning in and i'll see you next time nice coffee talking with you <laughs>